notion of false. Kalayar dosha nidherajan asti yeko mahan gunaha. Kirtana deva krishnasya mukta sangaha param rajir. Although Kali is dosha nidhi, although Kali Yuga is an ocean of all faults, asti yeko mahan gunaha. There is one good quality. What is that? Kirtana deva krishnasya mukta sangaha param rajir. By doing Kirtan of Krishna's name, Kirtana Eva Krishnasya, only by chanting the names of Krishna, you can attain salvation. You can Mukta Sangha Param Rajit. You can attain the spiritual kingdom also. So, the process of spiritual realization, self realization, has been simplified considering our abilities because people are not very capable. Therefore, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has appeared on this planet to inaugurate this Sankirtan Yajna. Krishna said this in the Bhagavad Gita, right in the middle. Krishna recommended that we all chant the holy names of Krishna. How many shlokas are there in Bhagavad Gita? 700. What is the middle one? Middle number of 700? Yes, Gitik. 350. In the 350th sloka, Krishna said, Mahatmanas to Mampartha, Daivim Prakriti Mashrita, Bhajanti Ananya Banaso, Gnatva, Bhuta, Dimogyayam. That is sloka number 350. It is 9th chapter, 13th sloka. <laughs> Krishna glorified Srimati Radharani. Basically, Krishna is describing the qualities of Mahatma. Who is a Mahatma? A Mahatma is one who has taken shelter of Srimati Radharani. Mahatmanas to Mampartha, Daivim Prakriti Mashrita. And by taking shelter of Radharani, what does a Mahatma do? He worships Krishna. Bhajanti Ananya Manaso, without any deviation in the mind, with exclusive attention, he worships Krishna. Right? Bhajanti Ananya Manaso, Natva Bhutadi Magyam, he is also aware of Krishna's glories. So that's how uh, Mahatma is described by Krishna. Right after that, there is one more middle number in 700. Because it's an even number, you'll get two numbers, right? 350 and 351, isn't it? <laughs> in 350, he described some qualities of Mahatma, which is taking shelter of Pradhana and worshipping Krishna. In 351, he's continuing the qualities of Mahatma. What is that? Satatam kirta yantoma yatantascha dhradhavrata namasyantascha maam bhaktya nitya yukta upasati to the first line. Satatam kirtayam tomam. What does a Mahatma do? What does a great soul do? What does a great devotee do? <laughs> Always chant the holy names of Krishna. Satatam kirtayam tomam. Always chanting the holy names of Krishna is the occupation, is the job profile, job description of a pure devotee, of a Mahatma. <laughs> the Mahatma is meant to chant the holy names of Krishna always. Krishna kept Radharani and Harinam right in the middle of Bhagavad Gita. So you have seen Bhagavad Gita from this perspective. <laughs> right? 349 shlokas, he said something. Remaining 349 also he is saying something. But in the middle, he kept Radha and Krishna. Name, Krishna's name. Satatam Kirtayantam. People question, where is it mentioned in Bhagavad Gita? That you have to chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Give Hare Krishna, people are just uh, wandering on the streets, jumping up and down, saying Krishna, Krishna, playing Vridanga, playing Kartal, and creating so much sound. Uh, Krishna said right in the middle of Bhagavad Gita. Did you read? You should ask them. Satatam kirtayam tomam. Krishna said it. Okay. It's not that we are not doing anything uh, different from what Krishna has taught us. Okay. Satatam kirtayam tomam. But Krishna said it. Not many people recognize this. And Krishna thought, after disappearing from this planet, after going back to his spiritual abode, Krishna thought, I told these people satatam kirtayam tomam. Like a sandwich I kept right in the middle. Okay. <laughs> Looks like people did not recognize it sufficiently. They are not doing Satatam Kirta Yantama. I should personally go and remind them once again. Maybe I should personally do and teach them how to do it. Okay. So after 4,500 years, Krishna felt I must take the form of a devotee and chant the holy names of Krishna and thus inspire other people also to chant holy names of Krishna. That's the purpose of Lord Chaitanya's incarnation. 
he has many other reasons also okay that he'll do that his internal confidential reasons but one of the most prominent reasons of, Mahab- of krishna's appearance as lord chaitanya mahaprabhu is to establish the yoga dharma which is chanting the holy names of krishna it is a picture beautiful picture mahaprabhu and nityananda prabhu gadadhar pandit shivas thakur advaita acharya all five of them accompanied by so many other devotees they are chanting the holy names of krishna congregationally inspiring everyone else also to chant the holy names so this is mahaprabhu sankirtan moment okay श्रीमद् भागवतम से कृष्णवर्णम तुषा कृष्णम यो तो नहीं कृष्णवर्णम तुषा कृष्णम संगोपंगास्त्र पार्षदम संगोपंगास्त्र पार्षदम यज्ञे संकीर्तन प्राये यज्ञे संकीर्तन प्राये यजन्ति हि सुमेधसह यजन्ति सुमेधसह कृष्णवर्णम दैट दैट सुप्रीम लॉर्ड कृष्ण appears as a devotee and what does he do krishna varnam he is doing varnam of krishna constantly or it can also be seen like this krishna varnam varnam means syllable varna can refer to varnayati to describe to glorify and varna can also refer to a syllable krishna varnam krishna these two varnas he keeps chanting krishna varnam tvisha akrishna all of his krishna his twisha his bodily complexion is akrishna different from black krishna means black <laughs> so that is golden complexion where did he get this golden complexion from from his own eternal consort shrimati radharani and what is her complexion her complexion is like uh, lord shiva describes tadit suharna champaka pradita gauravingrahe मुख प्रभा परास्त कोटि शारद हिंदु मंडल हे विचित्र चित्र संचराच कोर शावलोचने तद्दा करिष्यसि हमा कृपा कटाक्ष भाजनम दडित सुवर्ण चंपका प्रदीप्त गौर विग्रह हर बॉडीली कॉम्प्लेक्शन इज लाइक द शाइनिंग गोल्डन चंपक फ्लावर ओके एंड मुख प्रभा परास्त कोटि शारद हिंदु मंडल her mukha prabha her beautiful effulgence of her beautiful face defeats the combined effulgence of millions of purnami moons put together okay mukha prabha parasta koti sharad hindu mandale vichitra chitra sanchara chako arashava lochane so anyways that is the description of her beauty but she appears in a golden form and krishna borrowed that golden complexion from her and also devotional emotion from her so krishna has stolen the complexion and emotion of radharani and appeared as gaura vigraha as gauranga mahaprabhu to do what to spread harinam sankirtan to establish the dharma to induce all of us to chant krishna nama and hanker for krishna prema and attain krishna prema okay so this is described in chaitanya charitamrita also lord chaitanya mahaprabhu is non different from radha and krishna radha krishna pranaya vikrite arhaladini shakti rasma ekatma navapi bhuvi pura deha bheda ugata utam chaitanyakham prakata madhuna tadvayam chaitya matam radha bhava giti sugalitam naomi krishna swarupam so radha and krishna are one but they became two haladini hmm. shakti rasmat all the past times of radha and krishna are transformations of krishna's internal potency haladini shakti pressure potency they are they are one ekatma nav api bhuvi purah deha bheda ugata uto all the there one they manifested themselves in two forms as radha and krishna and all they are two now they became again one chaitanyakyam prakata maduna tadvayam chaitya mahatam all they are two they again became one as lord chaitanya mahaprabhu how did that happen radha bhava jyati sugalitam naomi krishna swarupam is krishna only 
बट ही हैज एक्सेप्टेड राधा भावा एंड राधा जिटी राधा जिटी इज द कॉम्प्लेक्स ऑफ श्रीमती राधारानी राधा भावा इज द इमोशन ऑफ राधारानी तो कृष्णा एक्सेप्टेड द मूड ऑफ ए डिवोटी एंड ही डिसेंडेड ऑन दिस प्लैनेट एंड ही स्टार्टेड चैंटिंग द नेम्स ऑफ कृष्णा ही बिकेम हिज ओन डिवोटी टू टीच अस हाउ टू बिकम डिवोटी ओके व्हेन अ स्मॉल चाइल्ड इज अनएबल टू राइट ए बी सी डी व्हाट डज द मदर डू ही टेक्स द hand of the child in her own hand and writes a b c d e a b c that's what she does right <laughs> that's what mahaprabhu is doing we are not chanting mahaprabhu is making us chant so teacher knows a b c d how to write a b c d so she writes along with the child similarly krishna need not chant his own names he can if he wants <laughs> but to teach all of us he is chanting his names <laughs> and by doing so he is getting ecstasy because krishna's name is so absolute that it gives pleasure even to krishna so krishna as krishna is not as happy as krishna when he appears as a devotee so in the spiritual world krishna is receiving so much of uh service from all his devotees and foremost of all the devotees of krishna is shrimati radharani right radharani is rendering service to krishna and krishna is receiving that service and he was thinking she is serving me doing all hard work and i am receiving the service and i am supposed to be the enjoyer but her enjoyment is 10 million times more than my own enjoyment so then i must become her to enjoy like her <laughs> so as krishna i am not enjoying as much as my devotee let me become my devotee uh, let me assume the mood uh, bhava of my devotee then i will also enjoy like my devotee so krishna is such a master that he gives more enjoyment to his devotees than he takes for himself that is the speciality of krishna <laughs> so he appeared on this planet as lord chaitanya mahaprabhu and has many other internal confidential reasons his own personal reasons why he became mahaprabhu but that those reasons that are relevant for us are this he came to uh, establish rinam in the sri chaitanya charitamrita madhya leela 23rd chapter first shloka krishna das kavras goswami writes chirada dattam nija gupta vittam sva prema nama amrutam atyudarah apamaram yo vitatara gaurah कृष्णो जने प्रपद्ये चिरात अदत्तम फॉर अ लॉन्ग टाइम द लॉर्ड हैज नॉट गिवन दिस स्पेशल गिफ्ट टू ऑल ऑफ़ अस अदत्तम मींस ही हैज नॉट गिवन दिस चैरिटी व्हाट इज दैट निज गुप्त वित्तम वित्त इज वेल्थ गुप्त वित्त इज सीक्रेट वेल्थ कॉन्फिडेंशियल वेल्थ निज गुप्त वित्तम ही हैज सम सीक्रेट ट्रेजर हाइडिंग विद इन हिमसेल्फ राइट दैट ही हैज नॉट गिवन टू ऑल ऑफ़ अस ही हैज गिवन मेनी थिंग्स बट ही हैज नॉट गिवन दैट What is that? Swaprema nama amrita na kya daraha? Swaprema. Krishna prema is the most confidential treasure that the Supreme Lord has not given us earlier. And Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu descended on this planet as a devotee to give that. So I have given you everything. I have given you Bhagavad Gita. I have given you Bhagavatam. I have given you so many things. <laughs> But I want to explicitly give you Krishna prema now. Svaprema, and how will we get Krishna prema? Through Krishna Nama. Svaprema Nama Amrutam Ati Udara Ha Ati Udara Ha. He is extremely benevolent. He is so benevolent that he is giving the most confidential secret treasure that he has to all of us if we just say Krishna, Krishna Nama. That's all. Svaprema Nama Amrutam Ati Udara Ha. And whom is he giving this? Only to Kshatriyas, only to Brahmanas, only to Brahmacharis, only to Grihasthas, only to Indians, only to Americans. No, no. Apa ma ramyo abita tar gaura. However ignorant one may be, however fallen one may be, however unqualified one may be, apa ma ramyo abita tar gaura. This Gaura Krishna is distributing even to the most so-called unqualified people. Okay. कृष्णो जने कृष्ण 
let us take shelter of Krishna, who appeared as Gora Krishna, Goranga Mahaprabhu, and giving Krishna Prema through Krishna Nama. Krishna Nama is the name of Krishna, Krishna Prema is the love of Godhead. So he is giving us the most confidential treasure of Krishna Prema by just inducing us to chant Krishna Nama. And Krishna Nama is the means, Krishna Prema is the goal. But once you attain Krishna Prema, will you, do, will you release, will you give up Krishna Nama? No. You continue to chant Krishna Nama with Krishna Prema. Therefore, Krishna Nama is definitely the means, but it is the goal also. The purpose of chanting, the goal of chanting Krishna Nama is to chant with love. <laughs> is to chant the same name with more love. So, Mahaprabhu has appeared to give us this most secret treasure of Krishna. Krishna and he said in Bhagavad Gita, Satatam Kirtayantoma, Krishna. No, he appeared as Mahaprabhu and he is doing Satatam Kirtayantoma. Yadantas Chadadhavrata. Okay. So, and Satatam Kirtayantoma, to always stand the holy names of Krishna. What is required? What is the prerequisite to be able to chant the name of Krishna always? Satatam Kirtayantoma. He said it as Krishna. He did it as Mahaprabhu. How can we do it? Yes. Ranada bhi suni chena karo rapi sahishuna amani namana dena irtani yasadana hari When we are humbler than bread of grass, easier said than done. Every day we may sing Sikshashtakam with great ecstasy. Okay, in the morning. But how difficult it is to include that. Ranadapi Sunichana, not being humble like a blade of grass, being humbler than a blade of grass. <laughs> right? That's a tough instruction. Tarorapi Sahishtuna, being more tolerant than a tree, not tolerant like a tree, being more tolerant than a tree. Okay? Tarorapi Sahishtuna, Amanina Manadena, giving respect to everyone, not expecting respect from anyone. Not hankering to be honored by someone. Yesterday we were discussing Govardhan Leela. Indra was hankering to be worshipped by Prajavasis. When they did not worship, he became so offended. Okay. And uh, other day we were discussing about Daksha. Daksha became so offended when Shiva did not get up. Our Vaishnava culture teaches us not to expect respect from others. And even if you receive respect, you humbly transfer that respect to Guru, Krishna and Vaishnavas. We are not the recipient of respect. Whatever respect we are receiving, we don't deserve it. The Parampara deserves it. Guru deserves it. Krishna deserves it. All the Vaishnavas deserve it. We should humbly transfer all the respects. All glories to the Vaishnavas. <laughs> Samaveta Gaura Bhakta Vrindaki. All glories to the assembled Vaishnavas. We say that, right? <laughs> we keep on saying it every day, before every class. <laughs> After every Guru Pusha, all glories to the assembled Vaishnavas, not me. <laughs> right? But when somebody is glorifying, yes, I'm there. Aham Tishthami Vaikunte, he was saying. <laughs> right? Yeah, we can take appreciation as an encouragement and as a blessing, we can go ahead. Okay. <laughs> but point is, no. The Vaishnava is one who doesn't hang for respect to anybody. Okay? And he feels very embarrassed. He feels very awkward. He feels, I don't deserve it. He may not say it. He may say it sometimes, but he may not say it also. But the inner feeling is, I don't deserve this. How can I hanker for respect? In such a humble state of mind, we will be able to chant the holy names of Krishna always. Satatam kirtayam tomam kirtaniya sadaharihi is possible when we are humble, when we are tolerant, when we are respectful. And when we don't desire respect from others. So, to be able to constantly chant the holy names of the Lord is a lifetime project. That means to develop these four qualities is a lifetime project for us. Right? So, we need to be humble. Not so easy task, big project. Let us be humble. But how to become humble? Let me tell you a story. I'll tell you two stories from Mahaprabhu's instructions only. Mm. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went for South India Yatra. Mm. He was 
cheating his own devotees associates in jagannath puri he said i am going to south india to search for my brother vishwarup he has taken sanyas after that i never saw him i want to search for him let me go by the time vishwarup has already departed from this land but lord chaitanya said i want to search for him you just leave me so no one should come to me come come with me <laughs> anyway it's a long story to cut a long story short mahaprabhu finally got permission from all the devotees at jagannath puri and he started for south india yatra and he had an assistant also kala krishna da so he was in ecstasy well chanting by while, while traveling he was singing krishna 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 he krishna 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 he krishna 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 he krishna 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 rakshama ram raghava ram raghava ram raghava pahima krishna keshava krishna keshava krishna keshava pahima in this way he was chanting the names of krishna and traveling in the south india eventually he came to kurmakshetra when there is a brahmana sincere brahmana he invited lord chaitanya mahaprabhu to his home mahaprabhu went to his home and this brahmana washed the feet of lord chaitanya and said your divine lotus feet o lord chaitanya are worshiped by are washed by great devatas like brahma and shiva also and those divine lotus feet entered my home today my life became successful my dynasty became glorious my home became extremely fortunate and sanctified thank you so much i have one request can you please allow me to travel with you i am fed up i am frustrated i am so tired of living this life here as a household yeah i just want to continue to travel with you just allow me to join you and lord chaitanya mahaprabhu said you should never speak like that you should stay at home take care of your family and whomever you see induce them to chant hari krishna speak shrimad bhagavatam speak bhagavad gita nare dekhe tare ka hai krishna upadesh teach them about krishna induce them to do shravanam and kirtanam hearing and chanting stay at home then kaguna badhave tama vishaya tarangi the waves of material existence will not disturb you if you live your life in this way he told them and he proceeded he told him chant and induce others to chant and he proceeded on his own yatra then there was another devotee named vasudeva he was also a brahmana this vasudeva heard that lord chaitanya mahaprabhu came to kurumakshetra and he visited kurma brahmana's house and vasudeva became extremely eager to see lord chaitanya mahaprabhu he had leprosy it's a very deadly disease his entire body was filled with um, some sores and wounds that are oozing blood and pus constantly okay so he was experiencing so much pain but he was also experiencing the pain of separation from lord chaitanya and he wanted to meet lord chaitanya he came with great enthusiasm to kurma brahmana's house by the time mahaprabhu left and he became so disappointed extremely disappointed and he was weeping i missed the darshan of lord chaitanya mahaprabhu then lord chaitanya mahaprabhu understood the heart of his dear devotee vasudeva lapar although he was traveling ahead in his south india yatra he changed his itinerary about turn back to kurma brahmana's house and was there a person him mahaprabhu you left again you came just to bless me just to give me darshan he became astonished he felt so fortunate he felt so grateful and lord chaitanya mahaprabhu came towards his karma brahmana i mean asudeva lapar and hugged him embraced him and just imagine who will touch the body of a person which is filled with blood and pus 
right? You may love that person, but it's very difficult to touch the person or get embraced in the person. You may love a person who got COVID, is quarantined, but you can't go and hug him, right? You love him, <laughs> but you give him prasad <laughs> from the door and then you run away and you wear mask, you wear gloves, you may even put sanitizer. <laughs> so much care is taken for all practical purposes, right? But Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, had absolutely no hesitation to touch him, to hug him. From one perspective, yes, he's the supreme personality of Godhead. No virus will affect him. Doctor may go to the patient, right? So he, he wears that PP, huh? or that big, big jacket huh? from top to bottom, everything is covered. Hmm? And also he has this mask and his sanitizer, everything is only eyes are visible. Huh? So he takes all precautions to treat a patient. That's great, okay? So, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is unaffected by the virus or the lepers. That's clear. Because he's the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But there's something more to it. It's not that he's just unaffected by the leprosy. He's affected by affection. So, a mother, when, he, when she sees the child, although struggling with some kind of infectious disease, her emotions are so high that she wouldn't sometimes even hesitate to hug the child. Because love is so much. It's like uh, the waves of the ocean just coming out. When Krishna was arrested by the coils of Kaliya, Mother Rishwata saw, Nanda Maharaj saw, many other people saw, Vajabhasis uh, uh, Mother Yashoda, Medesa Krishna being arrested by the coils of Kaliya. Then Nanda Maharaj is unable to tolerate seeing Krishna like that. He wanted to jump into these poisonous waters to save Krishna. Then Balram immediately caught him. Stop, stop. So when the emotion is so high, logic goes for a toss. Logic is sidelined. Logic is neglected. Okay. So similarly, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu embraced Vasudeva leper. And he's unaffected because he's, he is Supreme Lord, that's one thing. But he embraced Lord Chaitanya out of affection, out of intense affection, hearing this story, how Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had absolutely no hesitation in hugging a person whose body is filled with wounds and sores and blood. And plus, Tathapradra Maharaj fell in love with Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Mm. Okay, hearing this intense affection. Yes, he's not only powerful, he's merciful. He has the heart of a mother. He has the heart of a father, loving father. So anyways, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu embraced Vasudeva Lapar. By the embrace, by the touch of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, all the lepers is gone. And Vasudeva Lapar manifested there with a very beautiful, handsome, shining, effulgent body. And Vasudeva Lapar became astonished. My dear Lord, you have converted me like this. <laughs> he became so astonished. And he said, one thing, our, our class is on holy, glories of holy name, right? Why am I discussing the whole thing? <laughs> uh, the main climax point is coming. Vasudeva Lapar said, that, my dear Mahaprabhu, thank you so much for your mercy. But I have one concern. What's the concern? He said that you bestowed such great mercy upon me. Spiritual mercy by giving me your darshan, by hugging me. And also you helped me on this physical level by curing my leprosy. So externally, internally, spiritually, materially, I received great mercy from you. Great boons from you. This could make me proud. How can I remain humble? How can I not become proud? Please tell me some solution. When we receive some special grace of the Lord, when we get some material opulence or spiritual privileges, in both ways, if you are not attentive, to, there is a good possibility that we can become proud and puffed up. Okay. A devotee is always careful not to become proud, not to become puffed up, not, not uh, taking all the spiritual privileges into his head and thinking, I am so great and looking down upon other people. Devotee doesn't want to do that. 
So that's why he said, My dear Lord, I should not become proud. Tell me how I cannot become proud. Tell me how to, uh, how to remain humble always. That Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says simply one thing. Just chant the holy names of Krishna, you will never become proud. So what did we discuss? Sometime back, five minutes back. Renagapi suni chena kirtaniya sadahari. If you are humble, you can always chant. But how to become humble? Always chant. <laughs> if you chant the names of Krishna, you will become humble. If you are humble, then you can chant nicely. Right? So between chanting and humility, which comes first? <laughs> uh, both will go on parallel. The more we chant, the more we can become humble. The humbler we are, the better we chant. Okay? So now, let's discuss this point a little more deeply. We made a simple statement, blanket statement. If you chant, you'll become humble. Okay? And we have quoted a big story behind it. But how do we become humble by chanting always? How do we become humble by chanting always? Will chanting will make us humble? Yes, how? This one answer I want. Don't try. Yes, hmm? Yes, one answer. Yes. We understand your anarchas. Next. Okay, connected with Harinam. Fine. Any other question? Any other answers? Any other perspectives? Yes. You have perspectives? No? Okay. Anything else? Fine. Let's not want to. Our mind will humble us. <laughs> yeah. uh, the strong mind will humble us thoroughly. That's good. Any other reasons? Yes, Rancho Prabhu. Yes. Uh, yes, Rancho Prabhu. Yes. Wow, that's an amazing answer. All answers are amazing. But this is close to accuracy. See, when we are chanting Krishna, 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 or anybody's name, you are basically accepting that person's superiority over yourself. I am not great. He is great. That's why I am chanting his name. A conditioned soul is thoroughly infected with this consciousness that I am great. I am the master. I am the proprietor. I am the enjoyer. I am the boss. I am the creator. So that, that sense of uh, uh, false ego is there in a conditioned soul. A conditioned soul thinks that I am great. I am so great. Okay. But the more we chant, the more we accept Krishna's greatness. Yes, Krishna is great. I am not great. If he, if I am great, why should I chant his name? He doesn't chant anybody's name. I am great now. Okay. Earlier he chanted Brahma's name. Brahma, 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 come here, come here. <laughs> why? He understood Brahma is greater than me. He will give me boons and he will make me immortal. Once he got the boons, he started chanting Brahma's name also. Right? So anybody who is chanting someone else's name is accepting that someone else to be superior to oneself, isn't it? So the more we chant, the more we accept Krishna's greatness and we automatically become humble. Supposed to become humble, at least. <laughs> Sometimes we may be proud of our extra chanting also. I chanted 32 rounds. I chanted only 6 rounds, 16 rounds. <laughs> right? I remain humble, but I don't chant only. I remain humble. <laughs> That's another way of looking at it. Uh, by chanting more, I'm becoming proud. Let me chant less. <laughs> That's another point. But if we chant in the right consciousness, chanting in the right consciousness means to accept Krishna's supreme. Krishna, you are the master. I'm your servant. You are the boss. I'm your subordinate. Right? You are the controller. I'm controlled. You are the enjoyer. I'm enjoyed. You are the proprietor. I'm your property. This is the mood in which we should the more we chant, the more we become humble. The more we become humble, the more we will be able to chant purely. So, once Suklambara Brahmacharya came to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and he said, My dear Lord, I want to chant always. Uh, he, uh, he asked uh, about uh, the holy name and all. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explained this shloka. Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Yiva Kevala, Kalau Nastyeva, 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 Gatiranyatha. It is only holy name, holy name, holy name, no other way, N-O-W, now. And now, there is no other way. <laughs> so, holy name of Krishna, Hare Nama is the only way of deliverance. Nastyeva, there is nothing else, nothing else, nothing else. Nastyeva, Nastyeva, Nastyeva. 
It's nasty and eva. Certainly there is nothing else. There is no other way. Kevalam, uh, only. So he explained this shloka very nicely. And then he said, you will be able to chant the holy names of Krishna if you have these qualities of Pranadapi, Sumitiana, Tarorapi, Hishnana, Samarina, Maradina. He said, you will be able to chant always if you have humility. And to uh, Vasudeva Lopar, he said, if you have humility, if you, if you chant always, then you will become humble. Chanting will make you humble and humility will make you chant. So we need to cultivate both. So we get the seed of bhakti from a bona fide, authentic spiritual master, bhakti lata bija. And that bhakti lata bija will become bhakti lata, a creeper, by doing what? By watering the seed. And that watering the seed is what? Shravanam kirtanam. Chant the holy names, read the scriptures, hear Bhagavatam. By doing this sadhana, our devotional creeper is nourished. Our little seed will become a plant. Clear? But just watering is not sufficient. The soil also has to be fertile, right? You may have a potent seed, you are regularly watering it. If the soil is not fertile, how will the seed grow? The fertility of soil is compared with Vaishnava qualities. Like humility, foremost is humility, gratitude, compassion, respect, tolerance, satisfaction. So these are Vaishnava qualities. So we need to cultivate this Vaishnava qualities to be able to chant also. Then holy name will reveal itself to us. Holy name is not different from the person. Krishna and his name are not different. Abhinnatva, Nama, Nami, Nama and Nami are not different. They both are same. So the other day we were discussing Ajamil's story. Ajamil chanted Narayana, Narayana, Narayana. Not addressing the Lord. He was calling his son. But the son is not Narayana, but the name is Narayana. So Narayana responded. He had sent his Vishnu Dutas to save Ajamil. And he gave him a second chance to chant Narayana, addressing the Lord, not the same. <laughs> right? So the name has all potentials. Nam Nama Kari Bhudhani Sarva Shakti Tattarat Pita Nimita Hasmaranina Kala. There are no rules and regulations. You can chant any time. You can chant while sitting, while dancing, while walking. While, while standing, right? So I would, <laughs> while sleeping. <laughs> you, you can chant while sleeping, but you don't have to count your 16 notes. <laughs> you can chant. So, uh, so there are no rules and regulations. You can chant at any time. Taking bath, you can chant. Uh -huh. You can. Uh, Krishna has given so much concession to all of us. You just chant. That itself is a big concession. You chant whenever you want. Another concession. You chant wherever you want. You chant however you want. But chant. Right? Asmark is made already 35 to 20 or 10. <laughs> then he says, no, it's too much. At least come and sit for the exam. <laughs> that much you do. So I'll take care. So to that degree, Krishna has given so much of concession to all of us. Just chant the holy names. Actually, all of us the all of us have the potential to relish Krishna's names more than our life and soul. There's a shloka written by Rupa Goswami. He said, Tunde tandavi niratim vitanute tunda vali lambhaye karna kroda kadambi ni ghatayate karna bhute bhispruham cheta prangana sangini vijayate sarvendriyanam kritim no jano janita kiyam hiramurtai hi krishne tivarana dvayi. He says, when I'm chanting the holy name of Krishna, I desire millions of tongues because one tongue is not sufficiently sufficient to relish the sweetness of the holy name. When I'm hearing this holy name Krishna, when the sound vibration of Krishna is entering my ear holes, I desire millions of ears. Two ears are not sufficient for me to relish the sweetness of the sound of Krishna's name. To chant, one tongue is not sufficient. To hear, two ears are not sufficient. I want millions. To that degree we can relish. Cheta prangana sangini vijayate sarvendriyanam kritim. When I'm chanting the holy name of Krishna, all my senses become inert. My heart is completely focused on this mantra. Even in our regular uh, 
day to day life also we are so rooted in one video for example just watching a video somebody is calling come here come here you are not listening now because your eyes are fixed on it your mind is totally hooked to it right you are glued to it then other senses become inert some ant is biting mosquito is biting you are not realizing only <laughs> somebody is like hey, what happened mosquito is biting you <laughs> right you don't even realize that so of course no mosquitoes yet <laughs> they come there there are unlimited mosquitoes <laughs> especially in monsoon <laughs> so we senses become inert right when you are focusing on something similarly when you are so absorbed in holy name our senses other senses will just keep quiet right to the degree we concentrate on it no jane janita ki abhira murtai krishna ti varna dvagi krishna in these two varnas how much nectar is embodied i don't know rupa goswami sir you know all of us as amshas of krishna mamai vamsho jeeva loke veral amshas of krishna right all of us as amshas of krishna have this great potential to relish krishna's name to this degree if only we purify our consciousness from all other all passions and holy name of krishna is the most auspicious thing and the sweetest thing rupa goswami further mentions in vidyavali kalyana namidhanam kalimalamathanam pavanam pavanam patheyam yanmu moksho sapari parapada praptaye prochyamanam vishram sthanam ekam निधानम कलिमलमथनम पावनम पावनानम कलिमलमथनम इस होली नेम ऑफ कृष्णा विल कंप्लीटली डिस्ट्रॉय द मला कंटैमिनेशन ऑफ कलयुग कलिमलमथनम कलि कलमशापहम राइट पावनम पावनानम ऑफ ऑल प्यूरिफाइंग एजेंट्स होली नेम ऑफ कृष्णा इज द मोस्ट प्यूरिफाइंग पावनम पावनानम पाथे यम यन्मु मुक्षो सपरी भर पद प्राप्त ये प्रोच्यमानम वी आर ऑल लाइक ट्रैवलर्स ट्रैवलिंग फ्रॉम मटेरियल वर्ल्ड टू द स्पिरिचुअल वर्ल्ड इजंट इट व्हेन यू आर ट्रैवलिंग यू नीड सम फूड टू ईट राइट यू नीड सम रेस्ट यू कांट जस्ट कंटीन्यूअसली ट्रैवल नो देयर आर कार्स इन दोस दिस ट्रैवलर्स मींस दे टेक सम बैग एंड देन दे वॉक कंटीन्यूअसली वॉक 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 माधवेंद्र पुरी वॉक फ्रॉम ऑल द वे टू from govardhan to jagannath puri by walk to get some chandra for gopal ji so when you are a traveler traditionally <laughs> you need some food on the way now also and you need some rest on the way you can't drive continuous 8 hours 10 hours take some rest <laughs> so pathe yam yan mumukso sapari para pad prapta ye prochyamanam when you are traveling from the material world to spiritual world the food that nourishes us gives us strength is the holy name without nourishing ourselves with the food of holy name with the breakfast or lunch or dinner of holy name we can't is a spiritual world we don't have the ability to walk vishram sthanam ekam the one and only shelter that we have on the way we are walking walking from material world to spiritual world is not a small thing we feel we feel like taking some rest somewhere and at vishrama sthana you know a resting place travelers will just find a tree and sit under the tree and take some rest before they move ahead right so that vishrama sthana is also holy name vishrama sthana mekam that so exhausted fighting in this material existence in your pursuit for spiritual realization what will give you some is prinam right so prinam is our food on the way to spiritual world Harinam is also the resting place when we are tired, fighting in this material world, struggling for existence. Right? Vishrama sthana mekam kavi vara vache sam jivanam sajjanam kavi vara vache sam. Great kavi is also described the glories of Harinam. Jivanam sajjanana. 
This holy name is Jeevanam, the life of all sajjanas. You want to be sajjan? Durjan. <laughs> right? You want to be sajjan? Right? Good people. So, for good people, Jeevanam, life is this holy name. Jeevanam sajjana. Bijam dharma dhrvasya prantu bhavato bhutaye krishna nama. Bijam dharma dhrvasya. Dharma dhrva means the tree of dharma. Paro dharma. What is paro dharma? Savai pumsam paro dharmo yato bhaktira dhokshadi. The greatest dharma of all of us is bhakti. And the lot of dhokshadi. And the root of that, the, the root of the dharma tree is Harinam. The most important element of our bhakti yoga is to chant the holy names of Krishna. Right? Satatam kirtayan toma. Bijam dharma drubasya prabhavatu bhavato bhutaye Krishna nama. That's the potential of Krishna nama. And further, there are so many such sweet verses. Madhura madhura metan Mangalam Mangalanam Sakala Nigama Valli Satvalam Chitsvarupam Sakrida Pipari Gitam Shraddhaya Helayava Bhruguvara Naramatram Taraya Krishna Nama Madhura Madhura Metan Holy name is the sweetest of all sweet things. Krishna's name is the sweetest of all sweet things. What sweet you like? Hmm? There's only kids, so that's why I'm catching you only. <laughs> One kid left here. Gulab <laughs> jam. Gulab jam she likes. It's very sweet. <laughs> but holy name of Krishna is sweeter than Gulab jam. You taste Krishna's name. <laughs> it's sweeter than Gulab jam. Madhura Madhura Metan Mangalam Mangalanam Mangalam Mangalanam The most of all auspicious things the most auspicious thing is an opportunity to chant Krishna's name. Sakala nigama valli satvalam kitsvarupam. Sakala nigama valli. Sakala nigama means all scriptures. Valli means they are compared with a nice creeper. Valli means creeper. Lata. Okay. Sakala nigama valli satvalam kitsvarupam. Satvalam. The ripened fruit of the creeper of all scriptures is the holy name. Kitsvarupam. It's not a material sound. It is spiritual. Kitsvarupam. Sakrida pi parigitam. Even if you chant, parigita means you, you utter this holy name. Sakrida pi even once. Sakrida pi parigitam. Shraddhaya helayava. Shraddhaya with, with, with faith you chant or helayava with neglect you chant. In both ways. Taraye Krishna nama. Krishna's name will deliver. Krishna's name will benefit you. Even if neglectfully you chant the holy name, even if you neglectfully chant the holy name, Krishna will benefit us. Name will benefit us. You have seen the example of a jamal. What they speak of faithfully chant. Right? Krishna's name will deliver us. And this is the potency of chanting the name of Krishna. Right? So we know all this. We are aware of all this. But Durdaiva Midrishamiha. <laughs> so we somehow we are unable to concentrate. The reasons we discussed, I think Mukundamala Sotra, you asked the question in the book. So we were discussing three levels, right? Maranatmika Bhakti, Maranatmika Bhakti, Abhyasarupa Bhakti, Bhakti on the level of mind. Bhakti on the level of intelligence, bhakti on the level of senses. And in our current struggling state of sadhana, we may find physical services to be more easier to get absorbed in. But engaging mind in the name of Krishna seems to be a big project. It seems very difficult. But Prabhupada has given us a balanced program. We chant 16 rounds at least. It takes a couple of hours. You hear Srimad Bhagavatam, use your intelligence. Maybe an hour or so, or two hours. The rest of the day, you serve. Okay. So, there is engagement for our, for our mind, for our intelligence, and for our senses also. Prabhupada has given all three. Do Smaranatmika Bhakti also. Do Mananatmika Bhakti also. Do Abhyasarupa Bhakti also. And 
you can eventually grow in your devotional consciousness so that one day we release the name of Krishna. Right? We don't mechanically chant, but we release the name of Krishna. So how do we do that? We need to practice. Constantly practice. Continuously practice. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, 6th chapter, 26th shloka. You know that? Yato yato nishchalati vanas chanchalamasthiram tatastato niyam yaitat atman yeva vashanna yet Yato yato nishchalati manaha chanchalam asthiram Mind is very unsteady, very fickle, very strong, very restless, very obstinate. Krishna, our Arjuna said it. Chanchalam hi manaha krishna ha pramati balavadrudham tasyaham nigraham manye vayo rivasudushkaram I can control W, I, and D, wind. But you flip the W vertically, it becomes an I cannot control. Mind I cannot control. Wind I can control. <laughs> right? So Arjuna said it's very difficult. But Krishna said, don't worry. I have a formula for you. Okay, what is that? Yato yato nishchalati manaha chanchalamasthiram Whenever the mind is deviating from holy name, when you are chanting, mind is thinking of something else. Does it happen to you many times? It happens to me in every round, probably every mantra also, <laughs> probably every name also. But Krishna says, Tatas tatodhyam yaitat atman yeva vasham nayet. Wherever the mind wanders, try to bring it back. Try to bring it back. Please bring it back. Keep on attentive. What is attentiveness? Attentiveness is our attempt to bring the mind back whenever it goes away. What is inattentiveness? Do not attempt to bring the mind back when it goes in. And Krishna is pleased with that attempt. We may not become successful in the attempt, but we are attempting, right? That attempting is attention. And Krishna is pleased with it. Although we are unable to chant with concentration because of the restless mind, we should continue to chant. And try to concentrate. One day Krishna will help us. But struggle pleases Krishna. Krishna is pleased with our struggle. Krishna, I may not be able to chant properly. I may not relish this chanting. Right, this, right now at this moment, I am not happy while chanting. Ideally, we should be happy. Right? We should be happy like Rupa Goswami. Uh, we should say, No jane jayi janita ki yadhi hi krishne tivaranadva. You should say that. What great nectar is embedded in these two syllables. Krishna, my God. I want millions of tongues. I want millions of years. You should say ideally. But we are not doing it. We are unable to do it. We are not happy while chanting. The mind is restless. But we know that if we try to chant, if we struggle to chant, Krishna will become happy. Although I am happy while chanting, my attempt to chant will make Krishna happy. Knowing that Krishna will be happy, let me happily chant. Okay, That's the logic. <laughs> Some people say, instead of chanting inattentively, I will not chant. <laughs> I will do something else. Right? What is the point of chanting without concentration? I will do something else. <laughs> no, try. If, if we want, abruptly, if we want attentive chanting, uh, it, it doesn't happen. We should practice. In the practice stage, there is no perfection. It's practice stage, right? When you are practicing, you cannot have years of ecstasy in the eyes. You cannot have hair standing on end. Right? When there is a cold wind blowing, then hairs may stand on end. <laughs> you are not well chanting. <laughs> when, when 10 more rounds are pending, we may get tears, but not out of ecstasy. <laughs> right? But we should try. Try. Let's struggle to chant. That like, struggle will please Krishna. Okay. So, uh, you know that popular shloka we were discussing the other day also. We didn't discuss, right? Mukandamala, we'll discuss now. Shatru Chedaika Mantram Sakalam Upanishad Vakya Sampoja Mantram Samsaro Cheda Mantram Samuchita Tamasaha Sangha Niryana Mantram Sarvaishvaryaika Mantram Vyasana Bhujaka Sandashta Sankrana Mantram Jitve Sri Krishna Mantram 
जग जग सतत जन्म संसार Our our absorption in the cycle of birth and death will be terminated by chanting Krishna's name. Samuchita tamasa ha sanghanirya na mantra. We can retire from this attachments to material world by sincerely chanting Krishna's names. We will relish Krishna's name and we will retire from material enjoyment. Enjoyment is not enjoyment here. Enjoyment is entanglement here. Our material engagements. Actually, are encasements. Encasements. We are we are being caged. We are being bound. We are being tied up. We are being arrested in a cage. Our material enjoyment is actually entangled. You want to untangle yourself, or you want to entangle yourself more? You want to untangle? Thank you. Okay. Kind of leaning. Tangle your neck with this with this bead bag, with this uh, with these beads. And Mahaprabhu said, "Beads are not just to see beads. Yes, we have to definitely tie our neck with beads. But there's more." Mahaprabhu said, "The real beads on your neck is the Trinada Pi Suni Chena Shloka. Tie that Trinada Pi Suni Chena Shloka as beads around your neck, and with that mood you chant, understand, Krishna is your God. Trinada Pi Suni Chena is your humble servant. Okay, and I'll respect everyone. I'll respect all your children." Right. I don't want any respect from any of your children. I respect you. I respect all your children. Tell me to chant. Let me do kirtan. Yes, I will. Okay. So, samuchita tamasa ha sangha niryana mantram sarvaishvaryai ka mantram vyasana bhuje ka sandhasta santrana mantram sarva aishvaryai ka mantram. This mantra, Krishna mantra, can give you all aishvarya. What is aishvarya? Not money. Aishvarya is not money here. Aishwarya, real Aishwarya, real opulence of a living being is Krishna Prema. That Aishwarya will get by chanting Krishna Nama. We get Krishna Prema. Sarva Aishwarya ka mantram, Vyasana Bhujaga Sandhasta Santrana mantram. Vyasana Bhujaga, all our bad habits and material attachments are like Bhujaga snakes. Just like a snake charmer will subdue the snake. Krishna Mantra, Krishna's holy name. Will subdue all our material desires. Sa sakala bhujaga sandhasta santrana mantra. Jhve Sri Krishna mantra, japa japa satatam janma saafalya mantra. If you want to make your life more meaningful, purposeful, fruitful, chant the names of Krishna. Satatam again, satatam kirta yanto mantra. Japa japa satatam. Right. Like our all sampradayas. All bona fide Vaishnava sampradayas, we see the strong recommendation that we should dedicate our tongue to chant the holy names of Krishna. Ji hive kirta ya keshavam. Okay. Uh, and along with chanting, we should also understand the greatness of Krishna by studying the scriptures, by chant, by reading the uh, Bhagavatam. We understand the glories of Krishna. So we are chanting his name. Simultaneously, parallel, you are understanding the greatness of the person whose name you are chanting, and you are also simultaneously serving the person whose name you are chanting. Therefore, abhyasa rupa is important, mananatmika is important, smaranatmika is also important. So I will chant. I will not do anything. <laughs> no, you chant and do service also. I will do service. I will not chant. No, you do service and you chant also. So the balance of sadhana and seva will bring us closer to Krishna. Okay, seva is a part of sadhana. Sadhana is also your seva. Thus, there is an overlap between these two. Your sravana, your smaranatmika, mananatmika, abhyasa rupa bhakta, all all should be done. Our hearing, our chanting, and our seva, all three should be nicely done with with nice balance. Of course, sometimes we give more priority to seva because of the season. There must be coming. Okay, <laughs> you may not get to sit and study Bhagavatam. Okay, fine. But other days are there, right? <laughs> Uh, other days are there so that we can have more balance 
we can dedicate more time for giving and chanting when the services are little less. When service comes with full blow, just give priority to that. So like that, when we balance both uh, chanting, hearing, and also our services, we can relish the path of bhakti nicely and get more. So, the glories of Krishna's name, let's say 24. We'll stop here and take questions. Or we can go on glorifying holy name. Up to you. <laughs> let's, let's give a pause. <laughs> Thank you very much. Sharanam Prabhu ki jai, Shrila Prabhupada ki jai, Grantraya Shrimad Bhagavatam ki jai. Yeah. Any questions or comments? We have some devotees joining the first real life after in the Zoom. Any questions on the Zoom? Remember in the first instruction verse 7 also. Chat Krishna Nama Charita Yes. In our conditioned state, we may not be able to release the holy name of Krishna because a jaundice affected patient may not be able to taste the sweetness of sugar cane juice. But what are we supposed to do? To be able to taste the sweetness of sugar cane juice, keep on taking, keep on taking. Then one day we'll be able to taste it. Similarly, keep on chanting, keep on chanting. Then we will say, Tunde Tanda Vini Ratham Thank you, Prabhu. So, even if we keep chanting, but then offenses are there. So, sometimes we can't avoid the offenses because we have anarthas in the heart. So, then we have to chant with the desire to avoid the offenses, right? And so, otherwise, we can keep chanting and chanting and you will not get Krishna Prem. So, you want to say anything? In the... Yes, bro. This is, that is perfectly uh, correct. And we have to be conscious of that fact. We should chant and we should try to avoid offenses. And the foremost offense to Holy Name is Vaishnava Parad. And this Vaishnava Parad, we'll discuss more. I think there's one topic on it. <laughs> uh, but uh, Vaishnava Parad is uh, from multiple, we need to understand it from multiple levels and perspectives. Uh, even stepping on the shadow of a Vaishnava is also considered an Abrahat. <laughs> Not becoming happy when you see a Vaishnava, that's also an Abrahat. It's like that. There are very strict things mentioned. But, uh, yeah. Ultimately, it boils down to the intention. Okay. Yeah, these are also we need to be taking care nicely. But point is, intention matters. Accidentally, for example, you are uh, dancing in Kirtan and you stamped on the foot of another Vaishnava. And yeah, I'm sorry, bro, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, 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 bro, no problem. Uh -huh. Even if he's a little hurt also, he may, uh, leg is hurt also, he may say, no, no, no problem. Because he never did it intentionally. But the real offense to your Vaishnava is to intentionally pull him down, demean, discourage, disappoint, envy the person, consciously trying to harm the person or insult the person. That is grave offense. Accidentally you do something, the repercussion is not so severe, generally speaking. Yes, that also we should avoid as much as possible. But unintentionally, accidentally, incidentally, you happen to say something or do something, it's displeased the Vaishnava. And if you recognize it, you can go and say sorry and he will forgive that. That account can be closed faster. But at intention level, within the heart, if you develop any grudge or envy or hatred or negativity towards another Vaishnava, even if the Vaishnava happens to do some mistakes, that's Vaishnava. With the other person's related mistake, you have to correct the mistake, rectify the mistake, give a feedback, you must chastise, you may punish also if required. But at heart, let's not hold any negativity. And that is there. That's real Vaishnava Parat. And that feeling within will manifest in words and actions. The emotion within will manifest as expression verbally, action physically. Okay. Emotion level, if you just 
eliminate any negative it was any vaishnav any living being forget vaishnav any living being we should not hold any grudge or any envy or any negative it was any living being after all every living being is a lord krishna that will lead to vaishnav other things are manifestations of that bad emotion we get right the wrong emotion that we have they that will manifest in our words and actions and it will become verbal offense and physical offense and all that but accidental offenses we um, we may do and we should immediately say sorry that they are relatively easier to be forgiven right when we hold any grudge or negative towards another vaishnava we can count our days in one sense <laughs> right at heart let's not hold any any grudges Yes, Ranjit. I'm very eager to hear your exciting question. <laughs> Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Thank you. It was a very wonderful class. So I had one question. You mentioned that it said that we have to, in our heart, it has to be ground us to be fertile with Vaishnav qualities. But in the fifth canto of Shri Mad Bhagavatam, it says Yasyati Bhakti or Bhagavati Kinchana Sarve Tara Sarve Guna Satra Samasthe Sura. Just by practicing devotional service, the good qualities come. But then we also have. What was so the question is like what's the level of sadhacha we need in order to effectively practice devotional service amazing question very thoughtful question i must all of us must congratulate ranjul prabhu for asking this you <laughs> feel so happy my brother is being glorified yes you also ask a question next question you ask <laughs> ऑटोमेटिकली then why should i specially endeavor to cultivate vaishnava qualities essentially that's a question bhakti ah uh, i think chana bhakti that's a that's a good perspective definitely <laughs> that is a part of answer definitely but let me give little more arguments okay this is the logical answer <laughs> in the 12th chapter of bhagavad gita krishna gave a big list of qualities in the last eight shlokas 12.13 to 20 He gave a big list of qualities that endear a devotee to Krishna. In the 13th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, from 8th shloka till 12th shloka, in five shlokas, Krishna gave another big list of qualities, aspects of knowledge: amanitvam, vadam, bhuktam, ahim, sakshanti, rajyavam, all that. In the 16th chapter, first three shlokas, one, two, three, Krishna gave 26 qualities of a Vishnu. Okay. So he said, "Tejak shama dhriti shocham adroho nati manita avanti sampadam daivi abhijatasya bhar." this within one little book of bhagavad gita it's a big book of course <laughs> but comparison to other shastras it's only 700 shlokas right within that scripture of 700 shlokas in three chapters in big big lists of shlokas krishna is emphasizing vaishnava qualities go to shrimad bhagavatam kapila in his teachings to mother devahuti he gives a big list of vaishnava qualities Krishna in his teachings to Uddhava, in Uddhava Gita, he gives a big list of Vaishnava qualities. And every now and then, qualities of Vaishnavas are described and recommended that we cultivate them. Okay, Narada Muni gives these teachings. Titikshava ka runika ha suhurda ha sarva dehi nam ajata shatra vaha shanta ha sadha vaha sadhu bhushan ha. Like that, he gives Bhagavatam gives big lists of qualities. Go to Chaitanya Charitamrita. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. in his teachings to sanatan goswam and in his teachings to many other people he is giving big list of vaishnava qualities again 26 qualities of vaishnavas are coming there also okay. so if we just practicing bhakti if all vaishnavas vaishnava qualities are manifesting in the personality of a devotee why is there a necessity to separately cultivate all these vaishnava qualities why gita bhagavatam sri and many other vaishnava scriptures are repeatedly recommending that we develop these vaishnava qualities it's a part of our sadhana but chaitanya mahaprabhu said 
this vaishnava character vaishnava qualities are ornaments of vaishnava vaishnavas may not be very excited to wear different different ornaments but the real ornaments of the personality of a vaishnava is the qualities humility compassion tranada pishamita again he said <laughs> so now in all the lists of the qualities that krishna mentioned in different places he says that bhakti is the basis of all these qualities definitely okay but if a sadhaka who is practicing akinchana bhakti uttama bhakti shuddha bhakti uh, akinchana bhakti if a practitioner of bhakti consciously cultivates these qualities that are conducive for advancement in bhakti therefore they are recommended very much but supporting your quotation we should also uh, understand that when our sadhana is very very sincere we will naturally give up all the bad qualities and naturally all good qualities will manifest in us even if you don't consciously cultivate you have to consciously cultivate that's a recommendation it's a part of sadhana bhakti but even otherwise also eventually they will manifest you want to prove dharva maharaj he began bhakti unto lord vishnu with a desire to attain a position superior to even his great grandfather brahma it's a material ambition and he also practiced bhakti with envy towards his step brother uttama with revengeful attitude towards his step mother suruchi isn't it there is revenge there is envy there is material ambition greed for wealth this is the background of dharva's bhakti but while doing bhakti he is not meditating on his desires he is focusing on bhakti within 6 months he is completely purified he felt so embarrassed and guilty that why did i why did i maintain any envy towards my step brother why did i hate why did i have such revengeful attitude towards my step mother why did i aspire for this broken pieces of glasses he compared the brahma's position of superior to brahma's position to be broken pieces of glass he felt so embarrassed and you know what he prayed for he did not pray for what he has aspired for earlier six months his mind changed he said my dear lord all i want is association of devotees ya nirvarte stanu bhartam tava pada padma dhyana bhava jana katha shravanena vasya sa brahmani sva mahimanya ke natha na bhu kim tvanta ka se yudita patakam mana i don't want heaven i don't want liberation i want association of devotees and krishna katha in that association bhakti muhu pravahatam vaini prasango bhuya ananta mahatam amana shayanam i want that he yes, aspired for that i want association of devotees he forgot all the material aspirations means by sincere practice of bhakti your envy will go pride will go grudge will go material will go greed for wealth will go everything will go all it should manifest okay and when dhruva went to his kingdom suruchi said my dear child may you live long the proper rights is like water flows when there is slope naturally water will flow like this water will not flow like that no okay, water will flow like this only similarly all respect and love and affection will flow towards that devotee because devotee has vaishnava qualities by dint of practice in bhakti uh having said that we need to also understand another perspective <laughs> we saw how we have to consciously cultivate vaishnava qualities while practicing bhakti and we also saw how by sincerely practicing bhakti qualities will emerge automatically manifest in you both we have references and everything but there are people who have all these good qualities but there is no bhakti what about that okay i'll address that there is one more one more thing there are people who are practicing bhakti they don't have this quality two cases case a case b okay let's do case b first by quoting upadesha amrit by rupa goswami you know what did he say he said that buddhbhuta pena pange drishtai swabhav janitai hi vakushas ya doshai na prakritatvam iha bhakta janasya pashyet he said drishtai hi swabhav janitai upushas ya doshai when we see dosha in the body of a vaishnava we should not criticize 
understood. Sometimes the Vaishnavas may be thin or fat or white or black or, uh, or short or tall. There may be different physical. Somebody may not have one leg. Somebody may have some other physical issues. But we should not evaluate or judge a Vaishnava based on the physical appearance. We should respect everyone. Clear? That's clear. But one thing surprised me so much. Drishtaihi Swabhava Janite. Vapushascha Dosha we understand. Okay, physical deformation is there. We should not disrespect. But when there's Swabhava, maybe there are issues. Right? A devotee may be harsh. May be very rough, very rude. Why did you like this? So he may become angry. Hey, outside people are more patient and more tolerated. Devotee, you are chanting Hare Krishna, you are chastising, chastising me so much. Right? We are, we are using such a harsh language. <laughs> they are hurting. So, we should not offend them all. Remember this shloka. Yes, Yasthi Bhaktira Bhagavata Kinchana. <laughs> because that devotee is practicing pure devotional service. He's not pure yet. He's practicing pure devotional service. Eventually, all the good qualities will manifest. Okay, here now let's go to KCA. What is that? Somebody has good quality, he doesn't have bhakti. <laughs> what about him? <laughs> the answer is his good qualities are products of sattvaguna. Without bhakti as a foundation, if you only have sattvaguna as a foundation for good qualities, the foundation will shake, qualities will collapse. Somebody who has very good upbringing, very cultured upbringing, very sweet speech, gentle speech, respectful speech, good habits, getting up early in the morning, uh, sleeping early, sleeping early in the night, mm, having regulated diet habits, having nice Brahmanical culture, all that was there till their teens. I have seen personally. They are coming from Brahmanical background. And when they join hostels, colleges. Not everybody. I am telling about few people who manifested those qualities. They had a great Sattvaguna background, but by entering in the association of people who are too much into Tamoguna and Rajoguna, they lost their Sattvaguna. Okay. They lost their Sattvaguna. So when good qualities are based on Sattvaguna, they are not sustainable. It's a material foundation type. But when you have a spiritual foundation, even if you don't have good qualities, now tomorrow you will manifest. It may take a while. Maybe it may take a decade for a devotee to become sober and gentle. Right? It may take a decade. That's fine. <laughs> but eventually they will manifest because bhakti is the foundation. To the degree that devotee is sincerely practicing bhakti, to that degree the devotee will be purified of all bad qualities and manifest all good qualities. It's just the bhakti or bhagavad. Okay? But for all practical purposes, we also consciously endeavor to cultivate these good qualities along with doing our Sravanam Kirtan, fertility of land. We till the land, we pour water, then the seed will grow. Does it answer your question, Prabhu? Yes, Prabhu. So we should focus on the sadhana and then cultivate all the qualities with a Krishna conscious viewpoint. Yes. yes. Thank you, Prabhu. Hari, hari. This is another class only in itself. <laughs> answer to this question. <laughs> So you talked about those three levels, like mind level, intellectual level, and physical level. And you referred mind level for chanting. But Prabhupada says when you chant, mind is not involved, right? It is just tongue and hearing. And you have to ignore your mind, right? So thoughts come, let it go. Just don't catch hold of it. You have to chant using your heart. Chant in a prayerful mode. So when your heart is engaged, mind is disengaged. This is what I have heard from Mahatma Prabhu's uh, yoga workshop, like chanting meditation workshops and all, right? So, so I'm just trying to understand when you say mind level, how is chanting? Ultimately speaking, Mind and heart can be one. When you say mana, that is sometimes translated as mind, sometimes as heart also. Mana. Mind. <laughs> Manas. Okay. So heart has two aspects. One, the organ heart. Second, the heart. You understand the heart? It cannot be explained in words. It's heart. Heart is a heartless person. 
I mean, if he's heartless, how can he live? <laughs> right? It's not a physical organ heart uh, that pumps blood. Heartless means he doesn't have uh, the, the sweet uh, feelings uh, and all that. Uh, emotions, sympathy, empathy. All these are ultimately part of mind in one sense. But when Prabhupada says neglect the mind, Prabhupada is highlighting the negative aspect of the mind that gets distracted. Mind has two aspects. One, emotions, feelings. Desires, so thoughts. This can be positive also. This can be negative also. Ultimately, we have to develop bhava, right? Is bhava aspect of body? Is bhava aspect of intelligence? Bhava is the property of mind or heart, right? So the I mean, aim of sadhana bhakti is to have bhava. But if you just uh, uh, just ignore the faculty, which is mind that has bhava. How can we develop with bhava? When Prabhupada said, neglect the mind, he said that neglect the mind's negative thoughts, neglect the mind's distractions. Mind, material mind, mind eluded by maya will distract you from chanting. Ignore those minds, provocations, instigations, desires, thoughts, feeling, willing, this and that, distraction. Ignore that. Ultimately, the mind has to be engaged in Krishna Seva. Savai manaha Krishna padara vinda If you neglect, like neglect, neglect the mind, how can mana be engaged in Krishna padara vinda Savai manaha Krishna padara vinda Then man, mana. Think of me, mana. And he says, mayeva mana adhatsva. Mana adhatsva. Engage your mind in me. Mayavesha mano emam. They engage mind in me. Right? So, Prabhupada explained all this. We have to engage our mind in Krishna consciousness in hundreds of places. So, when the, one place when he said neglect the mind, that's basically neglect the distractions of the mind. It's not our chanting is not a mindless activity or heartless activity. Chanting is a way to connect our mind or heart to Krishna. Right? So, when he says chant with hand, ear with ear, and with tongue, count with hand, and with tongue, ear with ear with ear. So these are there, but mind is not totally off. You switch off the uh, you know distractions of the mind, right? But when you focus these three things, right, eventually mind will come under control. So that that technique of neglecting the mind, ignoring the mind while chanting, is mainly to bring the mind to Krishna's lotus feet. That's the purpose. I hope yeah. I'm clear. Huh? Yeah. How can we are leaving? I just one question for us. Yes, ma'am. Please, please take my question. No, no, please don't do that. Yeah, uh, seeing it. How can we are born in the drama? Can we be born? Like, I'm coming from Russia. They were not born and their parents are going to Russia. But once they join, they get so much knowledge of all this. Is it the reason why people who are not in Indian bodies join to so much Sukriti? Is it because of past Sukriti? It is also attributed to the mercy that they received from exalted Vaishnava. When devotees show mercy, grace, and offer prayers for their welfare, naturally they will be spiritually benefited. Thank you. So, Brahmana family background, all this is not, they are not so much of great uh, importance. Anybody can, any family background also can advance in bhakti, they are sincere. I have some Western parents, older, they were long educated, they were born in Russia, and their children came, all of them did so much attraction. So many Western families with incorrect habits get so much attraction to bhakti. Is it because of their past karma? Mm -hmm. There could be. And what about some who are not in that family? And Maggie brings content. Bhagavad Gita, it's there at home. And people give a. Brahmani, Ambi Pandit. 
out of our also we see so there is some familiarity that breeds contempt uh, they may not value but there are some people who are like blank say they don't know much they don't know anything you go and tell them they will accept it but some people they know something they think no they know everything so such people may not be able to see all no you can't always attribute to past karma also past karma is like one reason definitely okay but uh, also the current attitude also matters and the mercy that they receive from vaishnavas also matters multiple reasons thank you hari krishna okay should we conclude ah yes sir okay. hari krishna should raise question hmm. unless your mind engages how can you hear that sound so to hear that sound your mind has to focus on to your ear mm. at least that's the i feel that's the way our body works mm. so that mind is always there should be harmony exactly exactly subtle body and gross body one more question i'll take a little time so you said that you know somebody is hooked onto the tv with some favorite soap opera <laughs> the person does not think of anything even the mosquito worst <laughs> you know bites bug bites sometimes that kind of it's very hard to bring or focus on something which we do not see in front of our eyes mm. sometimes my mind also i tell krishna that i feel like i hold him and bring him sometimes bhaganta is very far it's very hard which mm. you do not see every day in front of your eyes mm. only in imagination mm. it's very very hard thing so uh, i think krishna says that if i we step one put one step he puts two steps forward and, but he doesn't <laughs> bhaganta is very far bhaganta is very far i don't know how far yeah, yeah if my mind sometimes says i feel hold him and bring in front of us come here you should come here but although he is so far he has made it very hard very to accessible to us in the form of deity yeah that's exactly that's why i love deity worship yes hari hari thank you hari hari we conclude here so does it answer the question you uh, asked yes okay hari krishna hari krishna no no we conclude here <laughs> thank you very much hari krishna